Andy Rooney. My next guest produces the finest hour of network television. It's only a joke. Uh, this is the book that this gentleman has put together all about that show and other things. It's called Minute by Minute. Please welcome the creator and producer of 60 Minutes, Mr. Don Hewitt. <laughs> Hi, Don. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> you came with your own ice. I brought Mike Wallace. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate a guest who shows up with That's her funny. own tub of ice. Good. The money you're saving NBC is uh, two hundred million dollars, incalculable, or whatever. Uh, by the way, what do you think of that? Uh, uh, this takeover fever. Uh, Ted Turner was trying to get CBS. Uh, Capital Cities got ABC, and now uh, GE has taken over RCA. Does that affect you in any way? I don't think so. We try to buy CBS News. Yeah, now how would that have worked? I would have rather bought this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, there may be a market for this That's show. Right. Uh, but now, now, now who, when you say we tried to buy CBS News, who, who is we? Not just you, you and no, some other ones. Dan Rather, Mike Wallace, Morley Safer, Diane Sawyer, and Bill Moyers. And we said we'd like to buy it, and we think we could run it, and besides, we get... Ted Turner out of your hair and Jesse Helms. Yeah. You know what CBS is doing to Jesse Helms? No. They're going to buy North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> but but now, could you, is there precedent for a group of employees no. taking over a division of the... No, uh, there's no precedent for anything in television. But you were serious. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's certainly <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. But were, you were absolutely serious about it. Sure were. And uh, did you make a formal proposal? Yep. And what did they say? Get lost. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about the show. How many years has this thing been on? Is it 20 years, 15 18, years? 18. 18. 18 years. 18 years. Now, did this, this started, uh, when was um, First Tuesday on? Was that the NBC show? No, they have First Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, Good Friday. They keep doing those things. Yeah. But, but that was on after you came on? Sure. Yeah. So yeah. this was the, the first modern. That's time. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, We've had Mike Wallace on this show. I know you have. Very nice man. Morley Safer has been yep. on the show. Who of these guys is trouble for you? <laughs> Rooney. Oh, is he? Yeah, no, oh, yeah he yeah. was oh, on our show. Oh, yeah, also. listen, he gave trouble for you. Uh, yeah, he was oh, trouble yeah, for us. Yeah. Now, what kind of trouble do you have with him? What kind of trouble? I figure if I told you, Andy would go do a piece about me, and then I'd be... Re I'd rather have a Mike Wallace interview than have... Rooney do an essay about me. Does he, uh, you know, I think a lot of people think of Andy as kind of their goofy old uncle. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, but, but. Cousin. Or Cronkite cousin, yeah. is their uncle. Yeah. But Andy's you know, their cousin. I, I had dinner with this man one night. It right. was about a year ago. And yeah. he just whined the entire night. <laughs> he whined about the food. He whined about the host. And then he started whining about me. Now, is, is. How could anybody want to say <laughs> But is, is he like that at work all the time? No, that? he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. He's a, he just doesn't like us to cut his pieces under two minutes. Yeah. And, and what and, else? And, does he, it? and he has an office across the street and he won't live with us. And I, I think he's. Does he want to quit? Does he come in periodically oh, yeah, and say, I'm quitting? Yeah, he's always going to quit. Yeah. But I think he's ashamed to be seen with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who has the. Uh, who cheats most on their expense accounts? Me. You do? Oh, yeah. And who would be next after you? Nobody, even a close second. Oh, really? <laughs> what, uh, uh, what about Morley, Safer? Does he go out and spend a lot of dough no, on dinners? No, no, Morley's good. Morley, yeah. Mor Morley's terrific. Yeah. Morley's a real star. Yeah. Uh, what was he doing before he came to 60 Minutes? He was in Vietnam. He was in London. That was his last job before he came over here? Yeah, was London. London, yeah. London what Bureau. Was he, he was the head of the, uh, for CBS News there? Yeah, he was yeah. London Bureau Chief. Yeah. Nobody better. Yeah. He had a big house. I had a big house. Didn't want to come. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he figured... They, none of them wanted to come. Mike said, I'll do that show, because Mike figured he was going to go to Washington and work with Nixon and... Nixon. You said Nixon before. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, yeah. I heard you. Yeah. In the green room. <laughs> Why is the green room white? It's not green. You know? uh, well, up to now, NBC could not afford colored paint. I don't know. <laughs> So w when they got done out at you Rikers said, Island, they came over and painted right. our green room. And you yeah. said it looked like the men's room in Penn Station. Yeah, that's right. It should look so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, where were we? What were we talking about here? That, my book. Oh, yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, book, uh, the book the <laughs> tell me about, uh, tell me about the uh, uh, Frank Sinatra calling you up. Oh, now, this wasn't about 60 Minutes, was it? This no, before I, did, before I did that, I did an hour documentary on Frank, and we sort of lived together for nine months, and I filmed him. I filmed Sinatra the night he did the September of My Years album, and then we did him playing club dates and running around in that Learjet, and then one day a broadcaster at CBS 
did something Frank didn't like, and I was sitting home alone on a Saturday morning, and the phone rang, and the operator said, Frank Sinatra is trying to reach you. And mm -hmm. I said, put him through. And as I said in the book, in the voice that had purred to millions, I got a crush on you, <laughs> sweetie pie, purred to me, you got a four-letter word, doesn't begin with F, doesn't begin with S, working for you named... And then he gave her a name, and I said, no, she doesn't work for me, and I tried to calm him down. And I said, hey, Frank, you know that NBC's after you, and they want you for a series of specials, and they got $500,000 a show. And he said, I got more than that in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. Frank. Oh. So you don't know uh, what had upset him? Oh, I don't know. Everything upsets him. Yeah, but... He's I, easily upsettable. In that specific case, you're not sure what it was? Yeah, they tried to get on his boat, and, and they said that he and Mia Farrow weren't even married, and they're living on the boat. Oh. Big deal. That was 20 yeah. years ago. Frank Today, does anybody care if anybody's no, married? No. 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 You don't care. I don't care. No. Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you married? Yep. You married? Yep. Um, let's see. We're doing a commercial, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk more with uh, Don Hewitt here. Minute by minute. You did a, uh, uh, what I think is an unbelievable piece last night that must have taken uh, uh, an incredible amount of research to put it together. And I don't know if you guys did it or the... the no, no, we did it. The, well, we, we saw the guy Rogan who had done the piece for, uh, done a paper out in Berkeley. But uh, Morley Safer and Suzanne St. Pierre went to work and found all the movies that some of the great Reagan speech lines come out of. Yeah, and, and it's, it's more than just uh, casual references. It's, it's as if he said, uh, a great admiral once said, or a, a, a great uh, Air Force mm. captain once said, and, and they're all movies. <laughs> well, a lot of them are. Yeah. Now, now, what does that mean exactly? Should we, should we worry about something like that? Or? Oh. <laughs> I, it's a little late to work. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's more than like just a coincidence. There must be a, a half a dozen documented episodes, right? Well, you know, like a lot of us, he, you know, Americ, old American virtues are old American movies. Mm -hmm. That's where we all came from. <laughs> you know, where's the rest of me and win one for the Gipper. Yeah, and... yeah. Speaking of presidents, uh, tell, tell the story about uh, Lyndon Johnson. Oh. You're visiting him in Texas? Yeah, but the best one, we're having dinner at the White House. Right? Oh, okay. And in the middle of dinner, there were four of us at dinner, and he told the butler to bring in the television set. He wanted to see the 11 o'clock news. So they roll the television set in, and the guy on television said, the president said he will be making an important speech tomorrow in Nashville. And Lyndon said, no, I didn't. <laughs> now there's a conversation <laughs> going between him and the guy on television. And it was like a Saturday Night Live bit, because every time Johnson said something, he <laughs> would interrupt or contradict him. <laughs> Unbelievable. And then you're taking a ride with him out yeah, of, uh, to and, take a look at the ranch one yeah, day? Yeah, and he decided he was going to put me in my place and let everybody know who the boss was, and which is ridiculous, because if you've ever been around Lyndon Johnson, there's no question, no question who the boss is. It, yeah. And we're driving in that big white Lincoln convertible, and... There's a guy up front named Bud Benjamin with him, and Mike and I are in the back, and all of us, and he's eating a candy bar at like, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. And he hits the brake, and he turns around and he says, You, <laughs> put the wrapper in that garbage can. I said, Sir? And he said, Put the wrapper in the garbage can. So I get out of the car, and I put the candy wrapper in the garbage can, and he drove off and left me. <laughs> nice fella. Well, that's cute. So I ran down the road after the car. Yeah. And I finally found him. He's just having a little fun with oh, it. Oh, yeah. He was letting yeah. us know who the boss yeah. was. Just having a little fun with the, the Eastern reporters. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, t tell me about some, uh, some things that you've done to get stories. Uh, I read one of, that I found uh, I, you probably couldn't do today. Where you posed? I'd get fired if I did it today. You posed as a, was it a flight controller, air traffic controller? Oh, no, I didn't know. What happened was... Uh, it was Churchill's funeral. It was before all the satellites, and you had to supplement what you fed on the satellite with footage that came on the jet. And NBC had footage aboard a uh, RCAF, Royal Canadian Air Force jet, and we had a Boeing 707 going from Dublin, mm -hmm. which we knew would beat them back, but I didn't know they were going to use an RCAF jet. So I figured, boy, I better find out what to do with this. So I got the number of the RCAF operations shack, at Heathrow Airport, and I called up and I said, hey, listen, this is the CBC, which is Canadian Broadcasting, mm -hmm. and I said, don't let that jet go until I called you, and that was the only phone they had, and I tied it up for over an hour, and it never went, and uh, we beat them, and then finally I called up and said, okay, there's no more tape going, you can go. 
And we get off the air, and there's a phone call from the CBC, and he said, did you call the RCAF and tell them that you work for the CBC? CBC? No, it's CBS, I think I told him. He said, no, no, CBC, was that you? And I said, can I get back to you? <laughs> and you just let it go, and you skunked oh, yeah. NBC. Yeah, NBC, yeah. that's right where we are right now. Yeah, right where we are. $200 million. Uh, GE. It's a, uh, it's fun. This is, this is fun oh, to read yeah. all this stuff. I hope so. And it's uh, minute uh, by minute. It's 60 minutes, and uh, this is the man responsible for what everybody does on their Sunday evenings after football, Don Hewitt. Don, nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing your own ice. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks.